Hey y'all, welcome back to Two Old Crows Homestead. This is Shelly. We're doing something a little bit different today. We have an upcoming family camping trip that we're going to take and I wanted to make some um, fruit leather for my grandbabies for you know just a snack or for anybody who wants to eat it and um, also I'm going to attempt I've never done this before but I'm going to attempt to make uh, homemade vanilla so just hold on so the fruit leather that I'm making today is black and blueberry fruit leather we have a Kasori um, dehydrator let me show it to you this is our Kasori food dehydrator um, it's really simple to use it comes with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six trays. Um, and it also comes with a tray to make fruit leather and then another tray that has, it's like plastic. Um, I'll show it to you in a minute. But um, it's really simple to use. You just um, hit start and then the temp and you set the temp and then you hit this button again to set the time with these, not with these up and down. And then you hit start and it starts. We really like it. Um, this is actually a new food dehydrator. We had a food dehydrator that we had had for, gosh, probably 25 years. And for a long time, we hadn't used it. And um, it was in the basement of our old house. And my daughter asked me if they could, um, you know, use it. And they tried plugging it in. It didn't work. So I'm not really sure when it quit working. But um, we used to make, like, banana, banana chips and... Um, we dehydrated apples, we made beef jerky, we made, I really like um, taking like little pieces of pineapple and putting those in there and they kind of, it kind of makes like fruit leather, it's kind of chewy, but I love them. Um, so with that Kasori dehydrator, it also came with, um, there's something on the back of it, it also came with this tray and this is to make fruit leather and then it also came with this. And um, I'm not sure what to use this for because I haven't used that yet. So, but anyways, this is what we're going to use to make the fruit leather. Um, the recipe that we're doing, let me just do that real quick. So the recipe that we have is, um, it's all it is, is one pound of blueberries to a half a cup of blackberries. So um, Crystal had picked up a um, a gallon size it was almost a full gallon of blackberries from it was actually at our as your standard stop when we went to pick up our stuff there was a woman there that had picked blackberries on her farm and she was selling them so crystal bought them and um, in that bag there was roughly about a little bit over four pounds of blackberries I mean I'm sorry blueberries and um, we had some blackberries that I had frozen in the, in the freezer from when we picked blackberries here on our place and it equaled out to the right amount. So basically the recipe is one pound of blueberries to a half a cup of blackberries. You run it through a blender, um, get it all mushed up, and then you strain it to get all the seeds out. And then once you strain all the seeds out, you run it through the blender again to liquefy it a little bit more and then you put it onto the trays um, and that's what I'm going to show you. So um, it's good if you use parchment paper to put this on the trays. Um, you just lay it in there and it keeps your tray from getting all stained from those blueberries. Now, um, we made three trays of this last night, and um, this is just what I had left over that because I only have three of these plastic trays, we couldn't get the fourth one done. So um, this is the blueberry and blackberry um, puree that I had left over. It's really good because it's not loaded with seeds because uh, even though I like like blackberry seeds in my jam and stuff, a lot of people don't. So, um, including people in my family. So, um, we strain most of those seeds out. There's still a little bit in here, but it's not like, this isn't like 
uh, blueberry and blackberry juice. It's still kind of a jam-like consistency, but um, it, it's not loaded with all the seeds. So I just spread that out on here into a square. So really that one pound of blackberry or blueberries, I keep saying blackberry, that one pound of blueberry with the half a cup of blackberries would make one tray. Because like I said, we had four pounds of blueberries and two cups of blackberries and um, we got four trays out of this. So you spread it out like this. Looks like this. And then you load it. And I'm just gonna stick it here in the middle cause I don't have anything else to put on here with it. I'm gonna close the door. The temperature for this is 165, which it's already on there because that's what I cooked those out or dehydrated those at last night. I'm gonna hit start and then I'm gonna set the time. I just hit that again to up my time. Now this recipe says that you're supposed to do it for eight to 12 hours. I'm gonna hit start. So this one is set for eight hours. Last night we dehydrated at 12 hours and a couple of the um, the couple, a couple of them were a little bit past the leather consistency. They were kind of into the crunchy consistency, but, um, honestly, I tried one and they were still good. One of the great things about this recipe is that it doesn't have any other additives in it. You know, it doesn't have any extra sugars or anything like that. The only thing that's in it is blueberries and blackberries. That's it. Um, So when they're done, after the processing time, this is what they look like. Looks like leather. Now they're still a little bit sticky, they taste really good. Along the edges, they're um, a little bit crisp, but let me show you. So I'm just going to take that off. This is what it looks like. And what I do is I just take a knife and slice it down the middle. And then, set this over here. and then I will take, and I just kind of take this piece and slice it into one inch chunks, about that wide. So they look like this. So the really great thing about this, like I said, is that it doesn't have any additives in it. If your kids like those um, like fruit roll-ups, this is a natural way to do that. So this is a gallon sized bag and it's about half full of, and this is from the tr three trays from last night and then the one that I just popped in there that will add to this. Um, if your kids like fruit roll-ups, this is a great substitute. If you have uh, tons of berries left over, or um, you know, get a good deal on some blueberries or blackberries, and you want to try this, it's just a another preserving method to use up those um, those extra berries that you have. So healthy snack for your kiddos. Okay, so next I'm gonna try my hand at making homemade vanilla. Um, I have watched several uh, YouTube homesteading channels, different people that make um, make their own vanilla. Uh, one of them is uh, the Needy Homesteader. I've watched that one. I've watched Pine Knot Family Farms. I watched her make some. And um, those are just the two that I can think of right off the top of my head, my, right off the top of my head. But um, so I'm going to start with, I ordered my vanilla beans, which you can order vanilla beans from uh, Amazon and you can get them like in packages of 12, 24, 5, whatever, whatever you can find. And they have um, all different kinds. There's like uh, Madagascar, 
basically vanilla beans come from an orchid it's the it's a vanilla orchid um, I'm not sure I got mine from Azure Standard and I'll leave a link down below to Azure Standard so you can go check it out but um, these I got three of these packages and the funny thing about this <coughs> like this package had uh, seven beans in it this package had five beans in it and this package had seven beans in it I don't really understand except for the one that had five it seems like those beans are way thicker um, than the ones that are in the other ones the other ones seem a little bit thinner so I don't know maybe that's maybe that's the reason um, doesn't seem like a lot of consistency so for those three packages I paid just under 50 bucks I want to say it was like right around 45 bucks or something like that um, vanilla beans are expensive y'all um, I will say that the ones I've never bought vanilla beans from Amazon um, but the ones on Amazon they have like grade A vanilla beans and grade B vanilla beans I'm not sure what that's all about I just know the grade B are a little bit less expensive than the grade A um, I don't know but um, everything that I've gotten from Azure Standard has been really good quality and I'm really happy with that so that's kind of why I went with them for for these beans um, then I have these jars to make it in they have uh, you know like a little seal at the top and you just pull this down and clamp it shut um, one of the things about vanilla is that it needs to sit for a while um, most places say at least six to eight weeks before you use it but the longer it sets the better the taste is and the better the smell and all of that so um, and I, I did watch one lady's channel that she lets her set for a year and a half like 18 months I don't know about all that <laughs> but um, I'm sure she has some pretty fantastic vanilla so anyways I, I got six of these jars from Amazon you can find them on Amazon and then um, I'm going to okay <laughs> I don't know this is the this is the type of vodka that I have obviously people have different thoughts about using alcohol for cooking or in anything um, I do know that you can make vanilla with glycerin I don't know that I want to try that it just does not sound appealing to me for some reason but there's that and I'm sure that if you got on YouTube or Googled you could find some recipes to make that but I'm going to use alcohol to make ours um, some people say that the quality of the alcohol does uh, does not matter and some people say that you know adamantly the quality of the alcohol does matter um, I'm not sure I will say this I am not a um, what you would call an alcohol connoisseur <laughs> I'm not especially vodka it's just I don't drink vodka it doesn't um, appeal to me at all this probably was the cheapest one that they had at the liquor store um, you know absolute or something like that is going to be a little bit more expensive but um, this is what I'm using today so we'll see how it turns out at the end and or you know after six to eight weeks and figure out if we like it but I'm also going to use I'm also going to make some with uh, spiced rum Captain Morgan spiced rum now this is a little bit more pricey than your cheapest spiced rum and um, I just saw this when I was going through the bazillion YouTube channels trying to figure out how I wanted to make this someone had recommended this and said that this gives a very different kind of flavor than this one will like this is going to be your kind of pure um, vanilla flavor with um, the vodka but this one gives a you really get the the spiced rum in here and I thought that that would be really good like in the fall to make you know whatever spice cakes or anything that have vanilla in it that this would give a good flavor for that so I wanted to try that too you can also use um, bourbon uh, to make to make vanilla and <coughs> I will say like out of all these different kinds of alcohol I probably more know I probably know more about bourbon than I do any of these other ones just because um, 
you know, I'm from Kentucky and that's what we do is make bourbon, right? So, um, we, uh, Randy and I have actually done the bourbon trail here in Kentucky. And if you've, um, if you're ever visiting, you've never done that. Um, it's a really neat, uh, just a tour of various um, distilleries around Kentucky. I will say that my most favorite one as far as the distillery was Maker's Mark. It has a beautiful, um, just like, I guess you would call it a campus or whatever, a beautiful, it's not a campus, it's not a school, but just the way the whole thing is laid out, all the buildings are black with red roofs and it's really peaceful and nice. It's like a one lane road getting back into the place. But um, we really enjoyed Maker's Mark. And of course you get, you know, like at the end, you can dip your own bottle in the wax, you know, the Maker's Mark wax that they have on it. Um, as far as taste, uh, again, I am just not a huge, um, you know, like I call, I call all of that hard liquor, hard alcohol, whatever. Um, I'm not a huge fan of all of that. But um, as far as taste, I would have to say my favorite on the tour was Four Roses. And, um, and by favorite, I mean it was probably the only one that I could actually, you know, tolerate or drink or whatever. Um, just because it's just all so strong to me. Um, that tour was funny. We did it with a couple of our friends. And um, I ended up having to drive the whole time because every time we would go to a different place and get samples, Randy would end up drinking my samples because I just didn't, I, I'm just not a big fan. So, um, so yeah, but as far as bourbon, if I were going to do a bourbon one, I would probably use something like, um, um, the Four Roses seems to be a little bit smoother, um, or maybe Knobs Creek. That's one of Randy's favorites. He really likes that. He also really likes wild turkey. He uses wild turkey to make bourbon balls every year at the holidays. And that is, um, he's tried many different kinds of bourbon and we get the, the most um, compliments on his bourbon balls with the wild turkey. So, yeah. Um, so anyways, let's get to this. Okay, so um, a lot of the videos that I have watched, they had, um, most of them had two different ways that they did this. Um, most of them would take the pod and slice it down the middle uh, with a knife, just open it up and release those beans. Um, but I watched the needy homesteader and she, all she does is add the bean to the bottle. Now, as you can see, these beans are longer than my bottle. So I'm going to cut the beans in half and put them in there. Um, but she doesn't slice them open because she said that if you just leave the pod intact and put it in there, um, you can just gradually or continually add more pods to um, the bottle and just refill it with alcohol when it's done. When you're done using that bottle, you leave these in there and then just refill. You pour more vodka or more rum or whatever you're using into the bottle, seal it up, put it in the um, a cool dark place for another six to eight weeks. Um, I think that's what I'm going to try. <coughs> I like the idea of doing that just because it will hold those beans down in there. Even though I've got to cut them in half, I'm going to, you know, put them where the closed end is to the bottom and um, it will hopefully hold those beans in there and I can just continue to use them. So I'm going to put five whole beans into each bottle and honestly I'm not sure why I decided on five I think that that was just a number that I have gotten out of watching so many of these videos um, to get the you know strength that I want so that's three four five Okay, so I have four bottles full of vanilla beans. One of those bottles is actually short one bean because I guess I only had 19. Does that sound right? Um, seven, seven, five. Yeah, I only had 19. 
So one of them is short one, but um, that's okay. I'm cool with that. Um, I'm going to make two with vodka and two with the spiced rum. You need a funnel. one I kind of overfilled a little bit. I'm going to fill it up basically to that neck on the bottle. Ah, I think I overfilled it again. Nope, that's good. Now I'll pop the lid up here and clamp it down. I don't know if it matters, but I did rinse off my funnel for the run. I don't know that it matters. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing with the run. And there we have it. So we have two with vodka, two with spiced rum. Okay, um, so one thing about um, that you need to remember about these, uh, you need to label your bottles. If you're doing two different kinds like I am, make sure that you label your bottles because this will get very dark and this will get darker. Right now they're two different colors and you can tell the difference, but you won't be able to tell the difference after a while. Um, and like I said earlier, <clears throat> per the needy homesteader, how she does it, she just watches these um, vanilla beans and as they start to look like they're breaking down or deteriorating, deteriorating in the alcohol, she will add more vanilla beans to it and just keeps the process going. She's been making her vanilla like this for six or seven years and it works out great. Um, and she's a baker, so I'm thinking that she probably knows what she's doing. So, um, yeah, just make sure that you label these. I have some sticky labels that I use for canning that I'm going to use to, to put what this is. Um, and I would probably just, you know, just call this one vanilla and this one is going to be spiced rum vanilla or something like that. So, um, also make sure, um, make sure that you put these in a cool dry dark place so these are actually going to go into the back of my pantry um that's not some place that we leave the light on all the time so they should be okay in there there's not direct sunlight that gets to them i'm not exactly sure what the direct sunlight does to them but everybody says it's bad <laughs> so don't do that um yeah so uh give it a try and i'll make a video after these are done and we will um see what they're like, what they taste like, and all of that kind of stuff. So one other thing that I didn't think about, um, right now it's August, Christmas is in December. Um, so what is that, August, September, are we mid-August? Yeah, September, October, November. You have roughly four months that you could make some of these and give as gifts. And I'm just telling you straight up, if somebody gave me a bottle of homemade vanilla as a gift, I would be tickled. Um, I know that's a little pricey, but it's just really a really neat gift. Um, you could put this in a basket with this and um, some homemade jam, some sourdough bread, just whatever. But um, yeah, that would make it a really neat Christmas gift. And you've, if you do it now, you've got enough time to really give this the time to sit 
and um, make some good vanilla. All right, one last thing. I keep forgetting stuff and I keep having to go back and add it to the video. Um, first of all, I want to show you my labels. Aren't they cute? You can get these on Amazon too. Um, shake these. So for the first, um, I would say the first couple weeks, you need to go in and just give them a toss daily and just shake the bottles. And then after that, maybe once a week. And then after that, maybe once a month until they've sat long enough for you to, um, to use them. But just go in and give them a shake and it kind of mixes the stuff up, keeps them processing or I don't know that they process. They just kind of steep, right? Um, but yeah, just give them a shake. All right. Thanks. God bless.